Hey, what's up YouTube and welcome to my new devlog about my game Volunteers. As usual, there is a lot of stuff to do, so I'd say let's start by the coffee and just like that, we're ready to start. Let's go! Alright, so what we had in the previous devlog was the ability to shoot and to use our knife with our brand new model, right? And what we were missing now is the ability to show that we are reloading our gun exactly like that. So now we have an animation for all the guns. It's basic, but I think it's enough for now. I always need to make sure that everything is being synchronized on the network. This is a multiplier game, so of course everyone needs to see the animation when something is happening. All right, that's perfect. That's cool. Next. So I really wanted to add a sway effect to my player here. As you can see, as soon as I move from left to right, the player tries to match the position of the cursor, but like slowly. I've seen that in several games and I think it adds a lot of cool effect in, in the game and this is pretty easy to do, so yeah. I did it. Nice, so now what I want is a little bit of looting in my game, so I removed all the guns that I always have in my character and I created some pickable items that are like floating on the grounds and rotating. As soon as the player walks on the item, if there is room in the inventory, the server will pick it up and send it over to the player. This has been seen in a lot of game and I think this is really enjoyable to have auto pickups for weapons. It was pretty simple to do, I just created an area with a collision box and now as soon as a player walks on it, magic happens. And now I just need to place models in my scene and that's about it. Every items are gonna be displayed the same way on the ground, so rotating and inside the sphere. We're still missing something though, I want the player to know how to pick up items, so I created a small texture that looks like a key on the keyboard and this is how the player will know which key to press to pick up the item. I think it looks great. The key will always face the player and this is due to the fact that I use a billboard effect from Godot. This is pretty cool and as you can see, even though I rotate the camera, this is always facing the camera itself. I gotta say, I really like how it turned out. The player can now pick up items from far distance and everything was great, so I'm happy. Yeah, so we're done, the game is over. Girls, ship it. I'm just kidding. Of course, when you have pickable items in a game, you usually also need to be able to drop them. So yeah, just like that, I did it. I did my best to prevent them from clipping to the wall. It's not perfect. I believe that the best way to do it will be to add some gravity to the gun and I will have to throw the weapon instead of just letting it on the ground. But well, for now, that's perfect. And as you remember, I always need to make sure that it works on the network. So here you can see that the player is also seeing the weapon that is being dropped by the other player. So I think it works great. That's perfect for now. Since we have a topic up in the game, the player can just receive a weapon when it's being dropped on him. Cool, so the next thing, I needed to make sure that if a player dies, the weapon will also get dropped. And just like that, we have weapons on the ground. Nice. Wait. Have we just created a shark here? Oh well. Okay, so now the game is done, right? Come on, stop! Okay, okay, there is still a lot to do. Perfect, so I need to make sure that the initial state of the game is always the same. So as you can see here, I simulated this by dropping some weapons at some point in the game. And when I get back in the game, I should see the same weapons at the same place and with the same amount of bullets and stuff. And just like that, I think it works great. Now we're talking. Perfect. Okay, so I wasn't expecting to do the next point right now, but it kind of happened randomly. I was looking on YouTube to find some cool tricks on how to do some glow effects and some selection effects on my weapons. And I found a tutorial on how to do some cool sky and I tried it. It was so gorgeous. So I couldn't resist, I implemented it and now I really like it. So better sky! Wow! I think the demo speaks for itself here. As you can see on the left, this is how it used to look and now on the right, this is how it looks now. This is so much better. Honestly, I feel like I'm playing a brand new game here. Everything is different, everything is more powerful, the colors are really cool. I think everyone should change the default sky of Gara. Speaking of which, I didn't change it in the editor yet because I wasn't sure it was the final one, but still. Okay, so remember that 
all of this was because I was looking for a selection and a glow effect on the internet so now I also have one for all my guns and all the items I can pick up. So basically if the player sees the key on top of the weapon it should also see the selection. I think it's perfect. This is small enough but I think that this is doing what it has to do so yeah let's go. I've also decided that the knife is mandatory now so you always have a melee weapon. You cannot pick up knives anymore and you cannot drop it obviously. Next! Nice, so I've added a small animation for whenever you change the gun because obviously in the past it was instantly and it wasn't pretty at all. Now everything is being synced on the network and when you change a gun everyone sees it. That's perfect. That brought a problem though. You should not be able to shoot as soon as possible when you change the weapon. You need to wait until the animation is ready or is over. So I had to create a small delay before you can shoot when you change the weapons. And keep in mind that on the server there is no animation so I had to fake that kind of stuff by creating a small delay, a small timer that will simulate the animation time here. Okay, next thing, I wanted to improve the rotation on the cube. For that, I believe that the best option is to add some rounded edges on my cube so it's easier to pass from one side to another. I've also created a base mesh for all the levels so it fits on the cube and it follows the rounded edges. This way, all the level can just take this mesh and put stuff on it. That helped a lot, so now it's way easier to just pass from one side to another. It's not like you have to pass in a really edgy corner. Still, I'm not quite sure for the concept yet, so we'll have to discuss about it, I think. But while we're in Blender, I think it's time to add potions in my game because I want the player to be able to heal himself and to shield himself. So I have added two different potions in the game, one for the shield and one for the heal. I think it's pretty enough and this is how it turned out in Garat with my sky. This is the kind of items I want you to be able to loot in the game. So yeah, and guess what? I think it's coffee time and also the best time to create some sound. Perfect, isn't it? And now in Garat. Nice, so I've added some potions that you can loot and let's see how it sounds now in the game. Okay, let's forget about the fact that I'm having like a big black hole on my hand. And yeah, this is a feature, not a bug. You can now shield yourself. Amazing. And guess what? The other players are also hearing you. Perfect. So there is one last thing I want to do in this devlog and this is to add aim down sight. So I went back in Blender and created some animations. The goal is to align the weapon with the ray cast I have in the head. And yes, let's pretend this is aligned with the eyes, right? Well, this is how I place the ray cast in my game, so I have to follow it now. Anyways, I had to create all the animations for all the poses I can have. So for assault rifle and for pistol. I've also updated my animation tree here, so I added all the animations and stuff. And I added a blend between all the poses, so you can see I'm toggling between the normal pose and the aim down sign pose. And with the tween node, I can just smoothly change between both poses. Let's see how it looks now. Just like that I have a weapon and I can aim down sight. That's perfect. Honestly, I was kinda surprised on how easy it was to do it with Karat. And yeah, the results are pretty surprising. I'm really happy with it. You can now aim down sight with both the assault rifle and the pistol. So yeah, I think it's perfect. And of course, everything needs to be synced, right? So here's the result when you see someone aiming down sight in volunteers. Yeah, he's having it in the neck. Perfect. Alright, so last issue I fixed while doing the aim down sight was the fact that the guns were clipping in the walls before. We're good now. Let's go. Alright folks, that's all I have for this devlog. I hope you enjoyed it and we're gonna see each other on the next one.